What's up, wood nerds? Welcome back. I'm Tyler. Today, I got a doozy for you. We're gonna be making a coffee table. And it's not just any coffee table. It has a concealment drawer in it. It's gonna drop out of the bottom and you can hide things in it like valuables, cash, firearms, even your remotes in there. That way they stay off the tabletop. Follow me, let's take a look. The coffee table turned out sweet. I'm really excited about it. Let's talk about materials really quick. I listed in the description below all the materials that I use for this project. If you click on the link, it'll take you right to the page and you can purchase the item right there. I also listed tools that I used if you're interested, as well as camera gear. But enough of that, let's get into the video and build this table. on that table saw was scary, wasn't it? It was really fun making that video. The GoPro got this close to the table saw. Well, I'm gonna start on the top, and then after that, we'll go ahead and get to the base. Follow me, let's start. Step one, lay the boards next to each other to ensure the best fit with each board. You may need to try several combinations of this before you get the right fit. Once you're happy with your fitment, draw your lines to help guide you when drilling your pocket holes. I spaced mine 12 inches apart. Once your guides are drawn, drill your holes. Ensure they are oriented in the correct direction. After drilling, apply your glue. I always apply two coats on the ends of boards. The trick here to the flattest top possible is using your clamp to hold both boards level with each other. Once clamped, pocket screw away. Do the same thing for the other side. These didn't fit together as nicely as I'd hoped. I had to add pocket screws to the ends of each of these boards. For boards that are far off, you'll have to use a clamp. I have a large clamp here and I'll list that in my description. Really? 
With everything clamped in place and the glue set, screw everything together. Brakes are important too. I used a belt sander with 80 grit sandpaper to normalize any uneven spots. It didn't take long for that top to look really flat. I use this technique with the belt sander to create a nice rounded edge for the top. I continued with this technique for the corners as well. Next step, I applied wood filler to all the cracks. This includes between the boards and within the boards. I made sure not to fill any knots though. After the wood filler, I used an orbital sander with 100 grit sandpaper to clean everything up. I switched to 220 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander to get rid of any of the sanding lines. This made the top look extra smooth. After sanding, I applied a pre-stain treatment to the top. After the pre-stain treatment, I used Minwax Red Mahogany to stain. After the stain dried, I applied Minwax Polyurethane Clear Satin to give it a really nice smooth looking finish. If you followed my steps, we both know that top's looking really nice. While everything sets up, let's get started on the base. To make the legs for the base, I'll be joining two boards together on the ends to create a right angle. I apply two coats of glue and use this tool to hold the boards together while I nail them with this nail gun. I'll include all these tools in the description below. I use the same process for all four legs. To join the legs together on the short side, I used a 1x4 for the top and a one by two inch section for the shelf on the bottom. I used a wooden block spacer to keep the measurements the same on all sides. And I did this for both sets of legs. To join the legs on the long side, I used the same techniques. However, a clamp was very handy in helping with this portion. The fitment was nice and tight for the lower shelf on the long sides, so I really didn't need the clamp there. I took the base out back and added some horizontal support boards in which I'll use to attach the top later. I used a pocket hole jig and pocket screws to attach these boards to the base. I went around the base with some wood filler to fill in any holes left by the nails. After the wood filler dried, I used the orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper on all of the flat surfaces. I applied pre-stain treatment all over the base. Following the pre-stain, I used Simply White Stain from Minwax.
After the stain dried, I used pocket screws to add support to the lower shelf planks. I test fit my planks and everything looks great. I then set the planks up and prepared them for stain. That Simply White stain was a little bit more difficult than I'm used to. Maybe it was just my technique though. Either way, it was totally worth it to see that nice grain pattern show through. Well, while that dries, let's go ahead and jump to the drawer and get that started. Follow me. I joined the drawer frame using nails and wood glue. I cut a piece of 8 inch plywood to fit the back of my drawer. After gluing and nailing the back onto my frame, I test fit the dividers and the foam. Once I was happy with my fit, I nailed and glued all of the dividers in. used a speed square to help guide me in nailing the dividers in from the back. I added 3 inch butt hinges to the slider support boards. After the hinges, I mocked up and added the drawer sliders. I mocked up and added the opposite side of the sliders to the drawer. I slid the slider support boards into the sliders on the drawer and added it into the frame to mock up the mounting solution for the butt joints. I added these little spacers between the butt joints and the frame because the butt joints don't like to be all the way up against the wood. I flipped the top upside down and added the base to check for fitment. Once I was happy, I drew lines to help guide me through this process. I leaned the base back and added glue to my support boards and surrounding areas. I then let it down and use those guidelines to help me find my correct fitment. I then use screws to attach the base to the top. I measured for the center of the table and drilled a hole to mount this latch. I added the opposite side of the latch and everything fit perfect. Open your drawer to your desired angle and mock up the pistons. The slot missing from the slider support boards is intended for these pistons. You do not have to use pistons though. You could use a chain or wire to stop your drawer at your desired opening distance. After screwing the pistons in, click them together and try it out.
Last thing on the list is to glue the planks in for the bottom shelf. All I did was run a bead of glue and make sure the fitment was good. Let it sit overnight. All right, you guys, we did it. Good job, project complete. Leave a comment in the comment section about how yours turned out. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. If you have any friends, family, or some wood nerds that you know that might like the video, please share. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.